Okay, hope you are doing well. I'm Jody, and I wanted to show you some source code, and it's fun. As you may know, in Windows, you cannot create a directory called con. And you cannot create a directory called AUX. And you cannot create a call directory called com1, communication1. You may know it. And you may know the, re the reason. The reason goes back to the DOS era, 1980s. 83, I think, DOS 4. And this is a known fact. Things like com, AUX, com1, com23, and also con for console, which is a combination of your keyboard and your monitor. Uh, things like PRN for printer cannot be used as file names in DOS. And it extends to the Windows era because these are devices, well-known devices, hard-coded devices in the DOS world. But recently, Microsoft uh, published its MS-DOS version 4.0 as a free software with MIT license on GitHub. So you can go to the github.com slash Microsoft slash MS-DOS or search for the MS-DOS source code and you will find it easily. And if you go to the Microsoft, I think it has more than, yes, yeah, 6,000 repositories. Amazing. Uh, you can download it from here and have a look. I was doing so and I was checking for these devices just for fun and thought it's good to share it with you and have some funny chats about coding styles in Microsoft practically in those days. Things have changed. Anyway, so you can get the code from here, download it or clone it if you are very interested and you can open and check it. This is the whole structure. There are three different versions, 1.25, version 2, and version 4. These were there. Version 4 is released uh, recently. I think this is for 35 years ago, the operating system. You may know when the PC came from IBM, they were de delivered by the DOS and DOS was delivered by Microsoft and Microsoft became Microsoft. Later they go went for Windows, even up to some versions, Windows was running over DOS and later Windows became a separated, completely free of DOS operating system. But still you cannot create con. Let's have a look why. Uh, I was checking the whole source code. It's fun to see how it works. There is one BIOS directory, which does BIOS st stuff. The boot directory boots the system. Uh, then we have the CMD. CMD are the system commands. In the DOS era, we used to boot the system using DOS. Then we had some DOS internal commands like copy, like DIR, and some external commands, which were separated executables. They are here. For example, backup was one of those commands. We're able to backup things. We also had something like Edlin, text editor, debug, fdisk, find, format, and all the things we had. Restore, obviously, after the uh, backup. And we have dev directory, which I believe is like uh, device drivers and the DOS itself. And as you can see, many of the internal things are in assembly. Also in version one, practically everything was in assembly and very few files. So it's really worth going through this, having a look how the first DOS was booting. It's only few files. Not very easy to understand, but you can have a glance and see how it works. Anyway, uh, this is the first file I chose, mode CP, and you can see something like a device table here with some hard-coded values. Con, PRN, LPT1, LPT2, LPT3 for printers and for COM5. Uh, devices. So these are the parallel and serial devices. 
So these are in one table like this. This is hard coded. Also, you have this sys init too, which init the system bootstraps for the boot. Very, very early, it defines null, con, aux, and prn as hard coded values. And if you have a look at the commands, like for example, backup and restore is a good example. We have one check here. If any of the arguments, this is here, this is the function, check for device names. It says if device name is lpt1, lpt2, prn, con, null, blah, 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 then do this. So it's checking hard-coded even in separated commands. So if any of these, your backup will give back an error because you should not backup on printer. At least it was not, it was not 1960s. You were not backing up on console or printers anymore. The fun is why you cannot uh, backup on your... Uh, you can backup on your communication ports. This is fun. Anyway, where this is called, this is also fun. See this function. There is a function which is called parser. This parses the argument. So when you say backup A on B, you remember this is all is happening in the DOS world. I have one program. This is called DOS box. And this will give you a DOS prompt and a DOS box in your modern operating systems. DOS is still alive. I have this because I sometimes play DOS games in my computer. It's fun for me. There is also one project which is called Free DOS. This is a continuation of DOS by volunteers who enjoy having a DOS. Even there are developers who work with DOS. Because, for example, there are legacy systems which are which run on DOS and also DOS is kind of good for some of the embedded systems because it's very, very close to the hardware. When you run something on your DOS, you have complete access to whatever you want on your computer. So it's good if you want to create a program with very, very vast access with no problems, you can run it on DOS. So here you had these commands. For example, I've told you about con. You can, if you want to create a new file with some data, you can say copy from con to my file. It will read from con, which is console, your keyboard and monitor, and writes it into the con. Fun. If you want to show the contents, you don't have the cat command. You have the type command, but type is not cool. Cool people used to do copy my file on con, on the console. This is coming from com. This is what I typed. This is what I typed when I was running this command. So anyway, and here you have one command, which is backup. You have to say backup. Ah, I don't have backup here because this is not the DOS4. Backup A to B. Backs up from A to B. Practically, this should be onto different drives. But here, the parser checks that A and B. It does some stuff, and it's funny. At the end, it says, if strlen of your argument 1 is uh, greater than 5 or equal to 5, check for device name argv, and then just continues. This is not common at all these days. If you write like this, your teacher, your professor, your... Uh, co-programmer, if you're pair programming, your boss, your reviewer will complain that what are you doing here? You should say if check device argument is device name, your argument, say you cannot use a device here, else do the backup. What is this? It is fun. And remember, this is code Microsoft sold to IBM. Time is changed. Obviously, this was not bad code in 1980s. So, here it just checks and continues. Why? Let's go back here. 
in our function it says okay start define invalid parameter 10 this is also fun i will tell you why soon check four parameters if your parameter is this or this or this or this or this or this so you cannot do this create a value create a flag check the width of the screen maybe and display the error invalid parameter display it check the return set the return code and clean and exit so practically in the previous function you have parse you say okay my arguments are this check if it's this continue because if this is a device name your program will exit from this function nowadays this is considered ugly and also i said this is fun because normally we don't define our hard-coded values on top of the function which is going to use it this should be in one place so you will be able to uh, change it if needed or check it or whatever you should not search for this one in every single file at least it should go in top talking about single source of truth this is the restore function backup function restore command and in restore command you have exactly same function check for device name it is used here in the parse command line name is different nowadays people will ask you to have a coherent way to name your things and here it says again if the uh, str len of your argument is higher than five check for device name we know that this exits if it has sees a failure so continue and it has only one space here which is fun nowadays and then it checks uh, source drive checks the target file spec and returns with no value strange but what is strange here the point is you have exact check for device name in your backup and you have exact check for device name in your restore this is not good practice nowadays for many many different reasons for example if you find a bug here you have to fix it here too if you are adding a new uh, hard-coded device like jdi or jati you have to add it here add it here search where else is using the same uh, function check uh, change it there so it's very very dirty and difficult nowadays the good method is having this in one specific place and both of these should import call include or whatever language you are working with this specific parameter so you will have only one of these this is also fun talking about fun things copy as is part of the in the commands internal commands uh, this copies one file to another the fun thing is this is before uh, git era so on top of the file there is a section which says okay on 1st of 11th of 83 added a new line at the end of blah blah to get multiple file concatenation concatenation as like this this is cool and whenever they fixed an error they added it here for example they say in this time maybe the user eg i guess change to use x name trans call to verify that source and destination are not equal cool before that in previous versions previous releases you could copy one file to itself and you can see that this is added here for this blah blah anyway this is also fun this was uh before git for sure and that's it that's what i wanted to show you first we are not calling this a bad program i'm showing you how we evolved during all these years from uh 1986 to 2024 now your teacher won't accept having a function in two different places exact same function won't accept defining your constant on top of your functions difficult to find not returning values and this 
kind of stuff. If you wanted to check it by yourself, again, go to the github.com slash Microsoft slash MS dash DOS capital letters. Also, uh, search for it would be easier, MS DOS source code. Thanks for to Microsoft for releasing this. Thank you for watching this. And this can give you kind of an insight. Whatever you do is not directly increasing your capabilities, knowledge, they add to your knowledge. But this is not a, after reading, I may read this for another couple of days. This is fun for me. We'll check different parts, how they done this, how they define the FAT and everything. FAT file allocation table, their old file system. This was FAT16. But when wandering in codes like this, it's like wandering in a new city. You will learn new things. You will get better insight. This is, might be better uh, way to use your time instead of, I don't know, doing something else. They might be better than this. Who knows? This is your time. You will say what you do. What I want to say with my not good, that good English is doing this kind of stuff will give you an insight which many programmers who just learn about algorithms go to the classes, uh, read the scientific articles, won't have. You will get a vast eagle view to the whole history. It's like a soccer player who reads about the history of soccer. Spend a couple of times, check this code, see parts of it. Even if you don't learn directly anything, you will have a better insight. Have fun.